All right, hey there, guys. It's Delilah, um, and I am here with uh, Brandon. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? <laughs> It's branding. <laughs> I don't know the reference. <laughs> you don't know that song? No. Okay, what either way. Wow, okay. And this is the first of hopefully many videos just talking about Myers Briggs. Um, I'm a personality nerd. Uh, Brandy, I would call a personality nerd. Maybe that geek. is a fair assessment. Okay, uh, and we just we actually are going to be hanging out talking about personality types after this too. And I thought it would be fun to interview different personalities. Um, it's something I like to do, and I thought you guys might be interested as well. Um, so with that said, Brandy, being our first uh, interview on here, I am honored. Yes, yeah, me too. I'm excited. Uh, you guys are in for a treat. Brandy's pretty awesome. Um, and what is your Myers Briggs MBTI personality type? My personality type is. Oh, snap, you want to share INTP, <laughs> which Yay. is introverted, intuitive, thinking, and perceiving. Easy, right? Uh, cool, so that's easy enough. So <laughs> I'm excited about it. INTPs are really great. Um, in my own personal history, I know that my brother was an INTP, so I grew up with an INTP. Um, and I'm really close friends with Brandy as well. And so we're just going to go through and talk about some of the personality type things. I've got questions on my handy dandy gadget. Um, <laughs> and we'll just go question by question. You ready? Yeah. Let's okay. <laughs> Where, um, what about your parents and your family, those you kind of grew up with mm -hmm. or that raised you? Um, what were their personality types? Um, well, I've never... If you could imagine. I've never estimate. gotten to test any of them. Um, but, you know, just because I really enjoy this stuff and, you know, some people's names just kind of jump off the page when you're reading the descriptions. You're like, oh, that's my auntie. Or, you know, like... Um, so I've kind of type watched my family, I, I guess, but I haven't really, you know, gotten confirmation in most cases. Um, but you know, I was raised by a single mom and she, I'm pretty sure is an ISFJ. Um, I, I'm, I'm fairly positive about that one. You know, memory's pretty high up in her stack. I, I'm positive about that. And she is an introvert. Um, and you know, I, I see the harmony in there as well with her. Um, so I'm pretty sure SIFE, um, you know, ISFJ seems like the, the, the best fit for her. Um, I have lots of aunts and uncles. Um, I, you know, I pretty much lived with my mom and my grandma and I never could figure out my grandma's type. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the tough one, um, for me, but, uh, a few of my aunts, I, I, there's one aunt in, in particular I can definitely say, I'm pretty sure she's an ESTJ. Hmm. Um, she's the, the go-getter aunt that's, that's like, you know, wants to run things. That's and that, my mom. That, you know, has a powerful opinion about stuff, about how things should be run and, you know, want, wants her input. But most of my other aunts and uncles are, are introverts and... I feel like that's that's been an interesting part of the family dynamic is having so many introverts that that are trying to figure out how to interact with each with each other without stepping over boundaries and um, and you know figuring out their comfort with each other and then like a couple of extroverts yeah. in the middle of it that are like how do I get <laughs> how do I get along with all these people that don't necessarily want me like right there in their life you know like. And that's, I feel like, been the challenge for that generation. You know, grandma had 12 kids, um, nine, gir nine grandma girls. Grandma is strong. Let's nine talk nine girls, three boys. Grandma is a boss woman. <laughs> yes. And, and my mom was the youngest of the set. Jeez. So um, I, I've had an interesting seat to just watch family dynamics. And, and you know, that's that's been one of the biggest ones for me, you know, look, look in the last couple of years, I, I told my mom, I'm just like, I just feel like you guys are a bunch of introverts and you haven't figured out how to set the boundaries right with one another. And as soon as you guys figure that out, you'll be in good spots. Um, but yeah. Yes. 
it's interesting how much your family like dynamic can sometimes either shape or imprint or even react with your own types and how much it makes sense once you get your personality types and what everyone mm-hmm. is. Um, but I thought you don't have a choice with family. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of you're that stuck true. with them. But you do have a choice with who you kind of put yourself around. In your own personal life, what are the personality types that, like, in your friend group and your best friends, more so that you most see? I would say the bulk of my friends um, are NFPs and NTPs, Mm -hmm. um, people who speak the same intuitive intuition uh, uh, intuitive intuition extroverted intuition language um so that that exploration function um i feel like that adds a lot of energy and and you know you're i feel like that function in particular like if you're ne or ni or se or si like that's kind of the function that most colors what you just casually talk about Mm -hmm. i feel like so um, that gathering function, the the primary gathering function that you use. Um, so, so for for the NE types, there's a certain energy when when you get into a conversation with another NE type. I feel like mm-hmm. that's it's just not the same with the other types. Um, so you know, a lot of a lot of uh, NFPs and NTPs are the ones that I gravitate towards. Um, I do have. Other really close friendships, like one of my best friends is uh, ESFP, um, which is very different, (laughs) (laughs) extremely different. Um, And, um, you know, our our friendship is um, it kind of has its tricky points at times. And, you know, I I I read this other stuff about uh, there's another. there's another personality type system that's rooted in the same stuff called mm. socionics. Um, and socionics is more, uh, it's mostly Russian. Um, and, Duh. but it's, it's all built, yes. it's all built off of Carl Jung stuff. Uh, so, so it's, it's, a uh, you know, Myers Briggs comes from the same parent as this does. Mm-hmm. Um, but socionics is more about the dynamics between the different types. Um, that's really what they focus on more. And ESFP is a conflict relationship for me, uh, which basically means like because of the way we think, a lot of times we don't see eye to eye. Um, And that's been a tricky thing in that friendship um, for a while that we just um, we're not focused on the same things. And maybe, you know, sometimes something that feels like it's a very little deal to one person is is just a gigantic issue for the other. Um, and it's been, a, it's a spot where, um, the only way we've been able to work through stuff, because I've been friends with this person for like 10 years. Um, and the only way we've been able to work through a lot of what we've been able to work through is directly communicating about it. And, and also just that we've had, that there's a lot of respect there. Um, so we've been able to work through a lot of things, but it's not the most natural fit Mm. um but it's it's been one of those things where we've been there for each other through tough times and you know that it's it's built into a friendship that has been really comfortable but you know at the same time it's like there are other you know personality types i I'm not going to be friends with a lot of ESFPs, I don't think. I got um, an ESFP limit in my life. <laughs> <laughs> she is the one. Um, like, that's, uh, it probably won't you be another that I get that type. You are the ESFP. <laughs> yeah, like, like, it's just, because it's, it's, it's tough. Like, that one yeah. took a lot of work. A lot of um, and, but, you know, and there are other types, like, there, I would say SFJs um, in general. ESFJs. ISFJs, um, everybody that deals with that that FE world really heavily um, are types that I appreciate and that I like to have in group settings. Like they they balance me, um, but for whatever reason, it's it's just not. Um, it's not a good fit for me personally as like a one-on-one, like a close friendship. I, I don't really have any types that I hate. 
Or I hope not. Like, like I don't have, like there's Christian. not there's not any there's not any type that's like um you know directly repellent per se, but but there's something with with SFJs it's just like the world that they um choose to inhabit is just not an engaging space I guess for me. Uh, so so it's like I like having them around. They contribute a lot to groups. I see the value in them. But personally, they're just not the ones that I'm typically going to spend a lot of time with um, just because it's um, I don't know. I don't I just don't feel like we find each other interesting. Like mm. like sometimes they actually find me interesting. But um, when, when people are talking about their um, their day to day and, you know, for for uh, SFJs and STJs, like they get very into like. I'm going to give you the minutia of this day. <laughs> like I'm going to give you every detail of how, how things went down. It's, it's, you know, sensors they're, they're, they talk like that, but then like there, there's another thing where it gets into lo- the logistics of it. Like I'm going to tell you how I thought through this and I'm going to tell you, um, you know, um, how I processed all these details basically and I'm like, that's cool for you, but I just, oh, like, it's hard for me to stay engaged. Um, they wear me out, basically. Yeah. So it's it's like, I can engage with them for a while, but it's hard to to really have, like, a day-to-day friendship with, with those types uh, because they are the types that make me retreat back home and need to recharge a lot of times because it's just hard for me to engage on that level for an extended period of time. No, our last relationship was a guy <laughs> who was an ISFJ. Um, and it was so funny because he always liked to talk about daily things. Like, what did you do today? I'm like, it's the same thing as yesterday. <laughs> like, not much is, nothing interesting. That's my mom too. There's nothing to talk about. Like, they, like you would want to hear about, I woke up this morning and I ate bread. I'm like, who cares? It's like the boring stuff of my day. <laughs> uh, but he wanted, uh, that's what he wanted to talk about. And so I, I just think it's interesting that you point that out. Yeah. Um, and so in terms of dating, what, you know, there's all these theories about like this type works best with this type and this mm. personality type goes best with this type. Do you know which one they say for INTP? Who they match the best <sighs> with or who they're best? It, it depends. There's, it's not consistent. Like, uh, different, different people have different patterns as far as what they, they suggest. Um, the ones you hear a lot are, uh, ENTJs. Um, let's see. E- ENTJ was one of the big ones. And then, um, the other, the other theory, what I'm, I'm running through things in my head. Uh, Kiersey stuff. He, he suggests, uh, the NF types, and particularly, I think he said ENFJ was the, the one, um, but INFJ is also a fit. Do, do you tend to line up with those theories of mm-hmm. like best interest or best partners or whatever, or the people you tend to date or at least be attracted to? What type of personality types does that tend to fall into for okay. you? Does it fall yeah. in line with it or does it tend to differentiate or, you know? Yeah. Who you like, Brandy? What so type of personalities? I I try to avoid leaning on that too much um, because I believe that once you reach a certain level of maturity, um, you can deal with a lot of different things. Um, so there may be a type on paper that's like, a best fit where they're, they're pretty sure you'll be comfortable with one another. But I feel like there's a lot of other types where maybe it's not the most natural fit, but it's still somebody that you can grow to love. Um, so I, I try not to, cause I don't know. I, I try not to pigeonhole myself too much basically, but keep um, those options open. <laughs> yeah. At least, at least to, you know, take someone out and get to know them better. Um, you know, and then maybe you'll realize, okay, no, this really doesn't work, but um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make Myers Briggs the 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 gate that someone has to go through, you know, and say, oh, well, you're not the right type. I'm not even. I gonna. only date Scorpios. 
I mean, and a lot of people do that. So, but um, I, I try to avoid that. But at the same time, there are certain types that um, I really do have more chemistry with. Um, and, and I would say that's, um, Kiersey was spot on about the NF piece, I feel like. Like uh, most of the NF types. Um, They're pretty bad. I, I tend to like a lot. Um, and, you know, and particularly, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I click well with NFJs, but I find myself liking NFPs more. Um, They're cool. <laughs> they are cool. <laughs> They're um, the best. <laughs> How many times can I say it? Um, and I guess, you know, the other side of that is, you know, j- just like I was saying with the friendship stuff, like uh, the, the more the uh, SJ types are, it's harder for me to really feel a connection to them. Um, like I get along with them in my day to day life, but I don't necessarily like build really, really tight friendships with them. And, and likewise, uh, romantically, I don't know how, how well that would click either. Um, so it's kind of, kind of that same boat there where it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's impossible. I'm saying, you know, that's, that's not the default that typically ends up working for me. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that pattern's shown up a lot for me. Um, and tease, uh, uh, you know, on paper would be a good match. And it's kind of like, you know, here's somebody else that thinks similar to the way I think, um, in practice, I haven't really, I just haven't had a lot of interaction with female NTs. Um, it's, it's not as common. Um, and you know, I, I mean, I went to Georgia tech, I was around a lot of them, but I didn't really date a lot of people at Georgia tech. Um, so, you know, I, I have a lot less experience with them than with NFs. And, and I definitely feel like, you know, I, I definitely like NFs. Um, I think it's interesting too, like how your, I don't know, how interest kind of like with experience and people and connection and how it reality works versus the theories and how all those can kind of conflict or sometimes be in line or all that. Yeah. 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 The theory is helpful, but I feel like we have a tendency to, I don't know, like there's, there's that level of engaging with the theory where you've gone from treating it as a theory and now it's a law, you know, now it's in science terms, like, you know, now it's a fact and there's no room for it to not be true. Mm -hmm. Um, or there's no room for exceptions. And, you know, I, I feel like we have a tendency to do that when we really start to engage with any sort of personality theory, but you know, that usually ends up being a mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it can help for a while to, to help you engage with the theory, I guess. But, you know, in, in practice, once you get to the point where you're like, oh, I stay away from this type of person because they're just not good for me. Um, you're not, you're not allowing yourself to grow for one thing. Um, and then you're also just missing out. Like you're missing out on all these other people that could be good parts of your life. You may have to figure out how to make that work, but, um, you like know, relationships are work. They are work. <laughs> yeah. like, but even even the ones on paper, personality type, just, even the ones yeah. on paper that look like they should be great, they still take work. And, and you know, you may be fooling yourself by picking the easy one um, without any further exploration of that, because people change. Um, and and then people it may be easy stray. now. It may be easy now, and then later, when that person changes, you've never gone through anything with them. So now, all of a sudden, there's problems all the time. I think the How's answer is just to refrain from relationships and with people, <laughs> and then you're good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just be by yourself. The extrovert is the one that said that. I don't know that. Um, <laughs> the non-committal ENFP. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't do relationships. You should be I. Right. Um, but I want to be around people. That's the conflict. Thank you, Brandy, for doing this, for joining me. Uh, You're a great example, I think, of an INTP, and I think a very mature INTP in terms of personality development, too, um, and also just an awesome person. So thank you for doing this. Um, This is the first of many, guys, and so... Uh, check it out. We'll have more videos. Go ahead and subscribe or press like or press the thumbs up button. Um, if you subscribe to me, you'll see more of my face in your suggestion box. Um, 
comment because we like conversation. Uh, I'll for sure share some of the comments with Brandy or, you know, he can come on and check those out as well. Uh, and also I will reply to any comments that you guys do leave. Um, besides that, I guess goodbye for now until I see you guys again. I will cut these, or mm, I have cut these videos into several different parts. And so if you guys enjoyed this last part, then go ahead and click one of the videos who are going to arrive all around Brandy's face, or maybe in the middle, or maybe <laughs> on this side. But there will be videos that will pop up on the screen, and you guys can click on to look at other videos that go along with this one. All right. This one looks really interesting. Yeah, and this one's really great, too. Ooh, Brandy. Mmm. <laughs>